Now the Oilers have the 14th overall pick. Are they, you know, what are they targeting, or are they going to try to do something with that pick? Are they going to maybe trade it for something else? I think they'll trade it for something else if the players they want, uh, Seth Jarvis, uh, forward from Portland, or the goalie Askarov from Russia, has gone. There's a good possibility of that. I think they could trade that 14th pick to a team with uh, multiple first-round picks, uh, whether that's uh, Ottawa, uh, Jersey's got lots, uh, and take the the later first-round pick and a second-round pick. Especially the second round pick, they have no second round pick, so I don't think the owners want to go from the first round to the fourth, you know, de- you know, to at least 75 in the Blue Cheech deal for James Neal without a pick. Yeah, I think that's the important thing is going to be who's there at 14, and you know, a lot to talk about Jarvis, and then a lot to talk about the Russian goaltender too. And I think if the Russian goaltender is there, uh, the owners take him at 14. So I think they might wait to see. If their guys are gone, and if their guys are gone, then yeah, there's no reason why they probably wouldn't trade down and, and try and get you know a pick in second or third round uh, using that 14th pick. So it'll be interesting to see uh, when you don't have a lot of picks in the draft. Um, you know, you try to you try to acquire some at draft day, and I think right now that 14th overall pick is is their best asset going into the draft uh, when it comes to just uh, trying to acquire assets. That's what they have is the 14th pick so it'll be interesting to see but i think they'll, they'll see how the draft plays out they'll see what happens and see who's taking who and then they'll make that call on that 14th pick how strong is this draft this the draft class supposed to be this year i know we have lafrenia obviously going to be taking number one but beyond that how is it looking uh i think it's a very deep draft in forwards uh, more so than defensemen some years it's, it's kind of cyclical some years it's lots of defensemen uh, this year it's forwards with only uh, Jimmy Drysdale who plays for the Erie Otters, Connor McDavid's old team, and uh, Jeff Sanderson's son, Jake, who's playing with the uh, 18 under development, uh, development team in the U.S. Uh, is the only for sure defenseman uh, to go high in the, in the first round. So lots of forwards, of which the Oilers could certainly use one. Uh, if you ask an Oiler fan... They all seem to know everything about every player that's coming up, even though they're not scouts. They're aghast that the owners would ever take a goalie with that 14th pick because they feel that goalies, uh, you know, pick that early, uh, often don't pan out. And certainly you can, you know, there are some of the Al Montoya vintage that didn't pan out, but Grant Fear was turned out to be pretty good at eight and Kerry Price at five. So if you're the owners, I think they need a goalie. Uh, a hot shot goalie and he's already playing in the KHL at 18 years old and he you know by all scouting reports he's every bit as good as Vasilevsky who was a first rounder with Tampa and he looks pretty good for the Tampa Bay Lightning right now there's lots of good players there the problem is most teams have their two or three you know guys they want to get and then as it gets closer and closer and closer you know those names get ticked off and then they're then they're when you're getting, you're picking in the middle of the first round, then you're thinking, oh, maybe we can move back and still get a player, you know, five spots deeper, or seven, eight spots deeper and pick up another player. And Carolina picks one ahead of the owners at 13, and they certainly need a goaltender in their system. So the goalie could be gone before the owners pick at 14. Yeah, from my understanding, you have, obviously your star player, Lafreniere, he's going to go to the Rangers. And then you have about four or five players that are kind of in the, the mix there. And then it, it can, there's a bit of a drop off, but there there are a lot of pieces there where you can get some depth pieces and depth players. Like the the, the goaltender is probably the best goaltender in the draft. And there are a lot of teams looking for goaltenders. The problem with when drafting goaltenders, as the Oilers, the last time they drafted a goaltender pretty high was Devin Dubnik, is it takes about three or four years to develop the guy before he even gets in your team. And then once he's on your team, it takes a couple of years before he works his way to be the number one starter. Do the Oilers have four or five years to invest in a goaltender? Uh, when right now, basically, the window to the window to win is open right now for them. And do they need someone to come in and, and help them right away? Um, this kid looks like he'll be a lot quicker than that. He could be two years away, three years away from playing in the NHL, uh, considering what he's doing in the KHL right now. But it still takes time to develop these guys. And I think the Oilers are after look at this draft and and the, the, that window of opportunity closes pretty quickly. And we have this is the fifth year Connor McDavid's been in the league now, and he's made the playoffs once, uh, you know, not counting this year's uh, qualifying tournament. So 
uh, how long can you keep trying to develop players to help the guys that you have now? I think the window, there's a bit of urgency, I think, with the Oilers right now. And I think they need guys that they can come in and, and make an impact relatively quickly in, in two or three years. And I'm not sure how many of those guys there are in that top round. Because when you're drafting after that, and if the Oilers don't get a, don't get a second or third round pick, then, then you know, you're looking at just depth players in the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds. So um, it's going to be an interesting draft to see what they do, if they can trade up or, or try to get something else. But, but they need warm bodies now, and they need bodies that can come in and, and make an impact. The problem is with the, Derek, with the whole drafting is everybody seems to think that if you draft a, def, a forward, okay, he's good, you know, that's better than drafting a defenseman or a goalie because they'll be in the league faster. Mm-hmm. I don't – Yamamoto, he's like 22 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, now he's finally in the league. So when he was the first round draft choice. So the forwards don't get there any faster than a hot shot goaltender if he's playing in the KHL already. The player the orders pick at 14, if it's a junior, he's going back to play another year of junior. Okay. Yeah. And the next year, he probably needs a year in the American League. So that's the third year when they're getting him. So uh you're certainly right that the you know the owner's window to win with this, you know two of the best players in the world in McDavid and Drysaddle isn't as uh, is you know closing more than it's wide open. But uh, you know there's no there's no panacea uh, in terms of picking a player when you're picking 14th. This isn't like they're picking in the top five here where the player can step in probably and play. And if you ask an owner fan. They dump all the draft picks just to get players who can play now. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. That's the way the teams are built. The best teams draft. And I, last time I looked, uh, Dallas, two best defensemen, uh, Heiskin and, and Klingberg were drafted by that team. And Tampa also drafted uh, that guy Hedman uh, as well. So, you know, you, you got to draft your best players and – if you're a general manager, that's what you're hoping for. And then those players you draft there get there a year earlier than than you want. Dubnik's trajectory took took a while until he was on the team. It took him more than five years. He was, what, not a regular until about 2011. Yeah, and then he turned out to be an all-star for another team. Like, that's the, yeah. the situation, right? So he, he played here a few years, didn't work out, and, and then bounced around. And then it wasn't until he got to Minnesota until he became – an all-star goaltender. So it takes a long, long time, in my opinion, to develop goalies. But if you think you have a, a, a really good goaltender or a stud goaltender, then, yeah, there's no reason to take a shot at, at him because, you know, you could could get a Vasilevsky. You could get a Carrier Price. You could get a Carter Hart. You, you know, you just – there there are exceptions to the rule of goaltenders taking a long, long time to develop. And those three guys are, are some of them. 